And um, can we have roll call? Director Ferris? Here. Director Falls? Here. President Henry? Here. Director Swan? Here. Not to protest. She wants one more. Nope. <laughs> Maybe um, here. Oh. One more director. Oh, and Director Smallman is not present. What's this? It's been gone for the last three Okay, days. so uh, staff has an announcement to make to the board members. Uh, the district manager received a resignation email yesterday from uh, from Director Smallman. And I got it also. Yeah. President Henry got it as well. Um, district manager followed up to confirm the intention to resign effective yesterday, and that appears to be the case. So. Um, at the next board meeting, it's going to be on the agenda to consider and declare the existence of a vacancy for Director Smallman's seat and uh, set the process in motion for filling the vacant board seat. We're not going to do it tonight. We're not going to do it tonight. It's not on the agenda for tonight. It will be on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Um, Which is the special meeting? Well, it's, it's on the 20th, sir. It's actually being noticed as a regular meeting. Okay. But, but yeah, it's, a, it's an unusual. <laughs> unusual. Next week's meeting. Yeah, okay. yeah it's going to be. Okay. And we'll decide the date and time of that tonight. Sure. Um, we can provide copies of the email if anybody's interested. And it will be part of the board packet. So, um, no oral communications, no one here. So uh, I guess, geez. Okay, for the uh, item 4A, the conference with real, real property negotiators, there is a requirement in the government code to actually announce um, certain aspects of the proposed transaction uh, during the open session. So I'm actually going to read the item into the record. Um, so item 4A uh, is regarding property APN number 078-233-05. Uh, it doesn't have a designated street address, but it's located along Scenic Way in Ben Lomond. The agency's negotiator for the potential acquisition is um, Mr. Rogers, the district manager, the negotiating party uh, owner of the property, as we understand it, is uh, Mr. Nick Nakari. And under negotiation are the price and terms of payment, which are the matters that can be discussed in closed session. And that's it. Okay. So we aren't hiring anybody outside to do this negotiation. It's mm -hmm. just gonna, it's going to be Rick. Uh, not to do the negotiation. There are you know, reports and things that will be needed from third parties. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to wait, or I mean, we will we will be hiring a, an appraiser, a property appraiser, okay. to do a property appraisal of the property. Okay. Um, and we can talk about the sequence of events in closed session. Uh, if you could briefly describe it. Well, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, I, I figured after we got a, a uh, property appraisal, I would come back to the board and we would discuss the appraised value and go from there. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll just take ourselves to closed session. Bring this meeting to order. So we're going to have roll call again. Okay. Director Ferris? Here. Director Falls? Here. President Henry? Here. Director Swan? Here. Director Smallman is not here. Uh, yes. Um, we made the same announcement just before closed session. Um, yesterday, the district manager and the board president received an email from Director Smallman indicating that he's resigned from the board. Um, the vacancy will be placed on the next uh, board meeting agenda um, for action by the board and um, to declare the vacancy and consider how to proceed with uh, filling the vacancy. Copies of the email can be made available to anybody who would like to see it, and it will be part of the upcoming agenda package. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's no reportable action out of out of closed session. 
I guess maybe I was supposed to say that before roll call, sorry. Um, um, so are there any comments from the public? None? About anything that's not on the agenda, anything your little heart desires? Okay, hearing none. Um, I'll move on to unfinished business. So item A is education grants. Yes, um, uh, the environmental uh, programs manager is on vacation, so I'll try to uh, deliver uh, this topic. Uh, it's recommended that the board review and accept the final report for the following 2018 classic watershed education uh, grants. Uh, the first is exploring the San Lorenzo River, fifth graders to science camp, San Lorenzo outdoor pressure uh, for education. And the second uh, is how much soil, water uh, do invasive species use. How much soil and water do invasive species use. Uh, you have the final reports in your packet and we're recommending that uh, you accept. Any discussion by the board? Any comments from the public? So, um, we, we have to approve these. Would you like a motion? Who do we <laughs> accept? Somebody needs to say we accept. I make a motion we accept. I second. Okay. Director Ferris. Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. And Director Swan? Yes. Okay, moving on to item B, the Hydrologist Consulting Firm Award of Contract. Yes, um, staff recommends that the board consider a recommendation by the Environmental Committee and authorize the district manager to enter into a contract with EKI or as needed hydrological consulting. Uh, in fall of 2018, our long-term uh, hydrogeologist, uh, Nick Johnson, has been providing as-needed services for over 30 years, resigned for a job in the public sector. Currently, the district uh, needs professional services to provide guidance uh, in representing the district's needs in the Santa Margarita uh, Groundwater Agency, identification of potential management areas for groundwater, development of specific projects necessary to achieve water sustainability, um, identify new sources of supply, review and develop recommendations regarding conjunctive use planning efforts, um, and other uh, water-related uh, activities. Uh, following uh, the board approval in April, the district solicited a request for qualifications for ad needed consulting services. The district received three proposals in total um, EKI, uh, Stetson Engineering, and Ludorf and Scalamini. All, proposed, all proposals were reviewed and evaluated by the Environmental Committee. Um, during discussion uh, in the uh, Environmental Committee, uh, staff mistakenly uh, stated that Stetson may be in contract with uh, the City of Santa Cruz. Following the meeting, staff learned that Stetson uh, is not in contract with any agency in Santa Cruz County. Stetson and EKI ranked very closely, with EKI narrowly leading the scores. There was considerable discussion about the process and the pros and, and, and cons. Uh, staff also attempted to call references provided by Stetson Engineering, and none of the five references were current. Uh, the Environmental Committee voted unanimously to recommend EKI to the board uh, to award the contract. And uh, the Environmental Committee Chair, uh, Mr. Ferris, may want to add to this. No, I think you summarized uh, the discussion of the last meeting very well. Unless there's any questions. It was, you know, the Environmental Committee really went through and had a considerable discussion. Um, there were all three firms were good, because each one was a little different. And um, I do know today at management meeting, this subject came up and uh, the manager's thought our recommendation was the right one that they've had. 
involvement with all three and thought that EKI was would be very good for the district. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I was on the <clears throat> committee discussion as well, and they all came in very close. And you know, I guess I didn't mean it flippantly, but you know, tie goes to staff, right? If, if, if staff is comfortable, they're all equally qualified. Then you know, let's work with the people that the staff would want to work with. The only counter to that was I typically like to give business to small companies, but mm -hmm. the fact that Stetson's references didn't appear to be current was was a little concerning. I, it means they're not on top of their, their relationship there, and that makes it a little harder for us to be able to evaluate that. Um, I'd say the only other thing here that I neglected to ask maybe during the committee meeting was about how much do we spend on this function every year? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? I, I do believe our budget this year is 50000 um, So. So It just depends on what's going on. It's as needed, sure. and it's important to monitor and and to, to use it cautiously and only as needed, so to speak. And, and I will be looking to you I, to make sure that, that happens. <laughs> right. um, we just want, you know, especially the, there's a lot in the RFP about the uh, about Sigma. They will not be attending the meetings. These would be times that we would ask them to review specific findings um, from Sigma and so forth. Um, and, you know, we use Nick Johnson over the years and, and evaluate our wells. So, you know, James, the director of operations, as well. We'll have them, you know, yearly spend a few hours evaluating our well drawdowns and our production to tell us how our wells are operating, or and, and, you know, so it, it's a it's a variety of of needs, and it's up to the district of, of the amount of time that they spend, and we'll be monitored very closely. Great, thank you for doing. And that, that consulting hydrologist, he's done a lot of work for years here. Uh, Mark for Fee has worked for the district and is currently un under contract with the district. He, he uh, is a, uh, a private consultant that, that really specializes in uh, mechanical and design and uh, maintenance of wells. Uh, has an excellent background. He's worked for the district for like, over 30 years. Him and Nick worked hand in hand before. Nick would look into the hydrology and Martin would look into the actual mechanical. Um, of the wells and so forth. Uh, getting ready to do two wells right now on a, a re rehabilitation. Yeah, very, very good, very straight shooter, and, yeah, good to work with, and, and reasonable in cost. It's probably worth noting that, uh, as Bob indicated, Stetson was a close second, mm -hmm. and they were the small company that he was referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to also note that independent that we all, all the people on the in fact, actually, everybody there, staff and the environmental committee, all independently chose EKI number one. So I think it's that's great. It's very um, comforting to know that everybody yeah. was unanimous. I think everybody there actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting at the end of today. We had uh, four managers and Don Ricker from Water Resources, and all thought that that was the, the best recommendation out of three for the district. That was comforting too. I think Mr. Fiel is going to be a right. excellent They yeah, talk highly of him. Yes. He impressed his resume. Mm -hmm. yes. Any other board member have a comment? No. Uh, how about public? Anybody? Ed? Uh, this hydrologist would be only for Santa Margarita or? No, anything in the district. Okay. You know, our wells, our surface water, uh, aquifer management. Uh, which we use it for over the years and review. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, um, do we have a motion to approve this contract with EKM? I would make a motion that we approve the contract of a hydrogeologist for EKI based on the wording that Jen had in her recommendation memo. Is that appropriate? Yeah. Uh, I like the way she. she um, I don't think there's a resolution, is there? Well, there's a. There's a. She made a. To state. award the contract. Right. Yeah, she you awarded just the, the motion. award the contract by motion, correct, Tina? Yes. Yeah. Right. I'll second. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Foles? Yes. President Henry? Yes. 
Director Swan. Oui. Oui. <laughs> So we'll go on to uh, item C, uh, the water. Was, if I may, just to, for Holly's benefit, I was referring to the recommendation from the email or memo from Jen to the board of directors dated July 18th. Yeah. On page one. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, okay, we're going to go to item C, uh, the 2019 Water Master Plan Award. All right, and the uh, engineering manager will deliver the staff report. Members of the board, on May 1st, 2019, the Lorenzo Valley Water District advertised for a request for proposal for consulting services related to the 2019 Water Master Plan. On May 31st, two bids were received, one from WSC Incorporated and one from Akel Engineering. Uh, during the week of June 24th, staff coordinated a review that included the company interview presentation, which included the current background, experience of staff, water master plans completed, project approach, and special issues. Also completed reference checks and a review of the fee estimate. After those reviews were completed, staff could not identify a substantial difference between the two firms and determined that each was capable of delivering a high quality water master plan. The deciding factor on which firm should be selected shifted to the only remaining criteria, which was price. Raquel Engineering has submitted a price for the master plan, which is less than half that of its competitor. Based on this price difference, staff recommends award of the 2019 Water Master Plan to Cal Engineering. Any questions? Any, any unhappy questions? Thank you. 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 The abilities of the two people that quoted that would, I mean, you said that they're equal. You know, are, do you do you truly believe they're equal? Only and only difference in differing in price. Yeah, we went through a fairly comprehensive review of a number of different criteria and uh, the presentations. They they're both going to use the same water model to model the district. Um, we we sat in here with. You know, this group sat in here with both consultants for over an hour, with both consultants going through a lengthy presentation. We asked a number of questions during the process, and um, I think the group was pretty much united in you know, pretty much a point that between the two firms. I think both of them are capable of doing a, a good master plan. I don't, I don't see any concern about either of those two consultants. It still leaves me with the question of why the difference in quotes is over $100,000, but the, the real issue is qualifications and what you, what you see is the, the best chance for getting the best product possible. And if you, you say it's a coin flip, then, then I, I, I accept your, your judgment. And just to talk a little bit about that, I think you've got one firm that basically specializes in master plans. Uh, right. That's, that's pretty much Which all. Which is able. They, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all they do. Uh, they have staff that are sort of you know, customized and streamlined to collect the data, put it into the water model, calibrate the model, run the model, and that's they're just highly specialized in that area. Okay. More efficient, that's the, yeah. being that that's what they're dedicated to. More efficient in translating to less yeah. time? Yeah. Or well, better job? Less overhead? Less overhead, yeah. I believe that's yes. where it's at. And, you know, we had, you know, you've heard these stories where somebody will come in low and then make it up and change orders and, yes. and those type of things. We question that we it right on the table, you know, what type of change orders you got to get? Where do you see, you know, do you, where you don't have enough time? You've seen our, they came in and reviewed our, our GIS, our, our yeah. mapping, looked at our mapping and our system, and, you know, where do you see problems where you're going to have to uh, use more time than you allotted in your. Oh, no. They didn't see that. So that was 
<coughs> yeah, we pulled, we pulled that right out of front. And I do believe the WRC checkers, they have a hard time competing with the state overhead. They're much bigger and they have a lot more overhead. They do a lot more things. My other concern is really more of a request, and that is that uh, we get back to WSC and, and share with them why they didn't get it. Why do I think that's important? We use them for a lot of projects still, and I, I still am of the belief that we need them more than they need us right now. Um, obviously, we're going to wean ourselves off, and I think we need to be up front and open with them about that so that they can still do the best job possible for us until we sever that, that relationship. Our engineers spoke in depth with them. About that? About that. Yeah. They, Thank you. I think when the staff report was posted, they've been aware of our recommendation. Oh, the they, they received the... Well, I don't know if they necessarily received it. I don't know if we sent it to them specifically, but it's on our, you know, it's available. Yeah, they're on the list. Oh, they're on the list? Then they so they know... It. Yeah, they've been um, aware of that for a week, and we've had conversations about that, and as uh, Rick has indicated, there's sort of an acknowledgement that it's just a larger, um, less efficient organization uh, when competing against a specialized firm that does nothing but, that predominantly does master plans. Okay. I, I, for one, have a really bad taste in my mouth about WSC. They were hired in the beginning without any uh, requests for pre proposals going out. They were hired because the former manager had worked with them in the past. And I think they have come on the USDA loan. They came back. They came back. They came back. And it went, the price kept going up and up. And there was no way I would ever vote for them because of that experience. So, you know, even when one of the problems with the USDA loan was they were missing deadlines and they needed to get a uh, new environmental company because whoever the other, the ones they originally got, couldn't do the job. So WSC got somebody else, but we also had to pay WSC 18, 17 or eighteen thousand dollars to find that company. And I mean, I hear you seem to like them, I, and that's fine. But I got a history here. Been coming to meetings, and got a history with them. So. Yeah, I remember, I remember the same thing, and I, I think it comes down to really the, the challenge I think we face, and this is where we're going to be relying a lot of you, Darren, is matching the kind of firm up to the kind of task, right? And so when you have a very targeted task, typically a specialist is going to be better for that. If you've got, not always, but I mean, that, that's sort of your general thing, because they're going to be able to bring the expertise to it, they have the lower overhead and all, and all those sorts of things. Um, you know, in the case of BKI, they're, they're not a specialty firm. They're a, they're a firm that obviously wants to grab as much revenue as possible around this, you know, groundwater uh, law that we have in place in, in California. But they came in at a price that was uh, reasonable, right? So the, the specialist didn't come in so much lower than you would have gone. Yeah, wait a minute. So I, I think that's the ongoing challenge that we're going to face. Uh, we do still have, I think, uh, an on-call uh, contract with WSC, um, which we had approved earlier, but um, hopefully we'll sort of, you know, continue to, as you're bringing more expertise to us, uh, not have to use as much in that, and I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. Um, so I'm, I'm perfectly happy, I mean, if, if you guys looked at it in depth, and it sounds like you did, and uh, you grilled them on it, which sounds like you did, and let's, Let's do it. This is great. I'm so excited that we're finally getting this going after so many years of talking about it. This is one so, of the most important documents we'll do. Absolutely. Yeah. And use it. This is an actual document we'll use forever. Absolutely. Yeah. It is yeah. so modeling. Exciting. We can't wait to have a model. We can start modeling some of our systems. So, thank you. Oh, no, I just want to second Bob's excitement.
Okay. How about any members of the public want to say, Ed? I have um, a statement and then I have a question. The statement is, I was here at the engineering meeting when they were discussing these two different companies. And when the price came up and it was a, over $100,000 difference, there was a, a statement made that maybe the you get more for your money because you're paying more. You get a better job because you pay more. And so it was recommended by the board at the committee at that time to go with WSC, but they had to look at the, they asked for an in-depth in uh, evaluation of the two companies. Um, my only, my statement is, Whenever, when we got the bids for the PRVs, or PVRs, or whatever they are on PICO, it was 400 and some thousand was a low bid. I think the high bid was in the 800,000s or 600,000s. I didn't hear one person at that committee say at that time that maybe we should go with the highest bid because they'll do a better job. You went with the lowest bid right off the bat. So, you can't, you can't change in the middle of the, you, you got to, I adopt one thing. The price is very important, but you don't always get a better job because you pay more money. Uh, that, that should never be applied. Okay, and then my question is, doesn't, uh, didn't we get a grant for the Northern System for this, uh, this master plan study? Wasn't there a grant granted to us? There is. So, if there's a grant, does that apply to part of this cost? Does it does. And how much is that grant? It's what, 89,000? So, uh, I thought it was more than 75. 75. 75. 75. Okay, so it's costing us the 83 minus 75, exactly. so it's actually 20 some thousand? Yes. That should be brought up, and that should be stated. Okay. That's my that's that's statement. Right. Right. Yeah, it's just as grandfather. Does anybody, uh, Virgil, he's got? Yes. Um, um, I think this is a, a very clear example of how to do business, that how things should be discussed and conversed. I, I'm, I, I don't think I would have seen this with the last four. Okay, and I think this is a good example, but one thing that I, I, I've always missed is the post-mortem analysis uh, of, a, of a project that starts out with high expectation and seems good, but there's a report, a page or two, written after the whole thing is over about what you learned, what were surprised, what surprises you had, and what would you do differently the next time. And that's, your project is not done until that's submitted. Good okay. point. That's Lewis's job. <laughs> <laughs> not mine, I'm just one board member. <laughs> Debbie? I just want to say, thank um, staff for your thorough review. I'm really impressed. Um, and sort of what Virgil said, is, this is the kind of comprehensive review of contracts that we, we in the public and me, and me especially really like to see. Um, I'm really confident that you looked at all the, the possibilities and compared it. And if all three of you are for this, then I have all confidence that this is a great decision. Thank you so much for your time on this. They made the space shuttle. <laughs> the lowest bidder wins. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, that blew up. Follow, follow 13. Only okay. one. So, um, Lois, comment, referring you back to board. Oh. Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, address what Ed said. You're absolutely correct. At the, the, the last engineering committee meeting, we did recommend WSC for the contract. But remember, we did that before we opened the bid packages. We were not allowed to make that decision with the dollars in, baked into the, to the, to the decision. So once we saw the, the huge disparity between the two bids, that's when we decided as a group, the engineering committee, to go back and look at why there was such a big disparity to try to ascertain whether or not this is something that really impacts the decision or not. And as it turned out, it did impact the decision. And I do agree with uh, the staff recommendation that we, we now go with ACO. 
Uh, but, I, but I still believe that price not being a consideration, there was nothing wrong with the decision we made with WSC not including price. So I just want that that decision was made without the knowledge of the price and then the I price understand. came in. The price, this discussion on getting a better job with the price came up after the, you know, it's, it's just, you don't use it normally, so it shouldn't be used, I don't think it should ever be used as a... The price or... or the price, the yeah, the saying you're going to get a better job because you pay more money. I don't remember that being said, it so was, I'm uh, not sure. I was well, that's not a good rationale, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Bob? Uh, this is one of the reasons why I completely oppose the process of looking at um, RFP responses without also having price being a part of that discussion right up front. Um, at the end of the day, you, you cannot fairly evaluate the value proposition and price performance without having both aspects of that uh, immediately at hand and available to everybody reviewing it. I've heard that there was some legal requirement that we do it that way. Uh, if, if that is the reason why we're doing it that way, I would like to ask if that is really the case. I did a quick look up on this and not clear that it necessarily applies to our district, our size, our situation. But going forward, I, I really think that we just need to be looking at numbers at the same time we're, we're evaluating the, the proposals. I think it's a waste of time to do it any other way. So we've changed to that. I don't know if you want to add to that at all, Gina? Uh, I, I think that's probably the best response is okay. that that would right. be changing. Right. Thanks. And, and to kind of take off of what Lou said, when we did just look at the two proposals, when you looked at WSC, who has had a, a, a great familiarity of our district, used all pictures from our district, had a lot more information because they worked for our district and knew about our district. Proposal-wise, WSC was hands down a much better proposal. But when we sat down and when you get down to it, the work that was going to be done was no different. Um, and so that's and then we sat down with uh, Ankle. Um, it was obvious that they were just as professional and were going to do just as good product. And there was no way we could overlook the, the difference in price. Part of that overhead goes to salesmanship. Yeah. But they put together a proposal, all our pictures of our facilities, and it was a, a really fluff proposal. Um, <laughs> just, if you don't mind my adding, just to provide a little more understanding of the context for all this. Um, there are two very different paradigms that apply. One paradigm is when dealing with public works contracts where there is the low bid requirement. You have to take the lowest qualified bid typically for a public works contract. So the conversation may be a little different there than when you're dealing with services contracts and especially engineering, you know, architectural, environmental project management services contracts. And there, there is a pro always a primary requirement that you have to try to identify qualified candidates, but what you do beyond that, there's some flexibility that I think the district is working with. Actually, the RFP for the Bear Creek Alternatives Analysis was posted, I think it was posted yesterday. That RFP and another RFP that I'm currently working on will be posted tomorrow, both are, were modified to take into consideration the price component. We worked with Gina. And Rick and Gina and I put together a revised RFP format that we'll be using henceforth. And you can see it on, on the RFP for Bear Creek, and you'll see it again in the RFP for the uh, what used to be the USDA loan pipeline project, which will be going out tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. That's great. Great. Good news. Thank you. Any other comments, again, from the public? Um, board members are done. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we accept the wording from the recommended motion of the engineering manager's memo dated July 10th, which basically says that we accept the Eagle Engineering for, the, for this particular RFQ. I'd love to second that. Okay. We have a second. A motion and a second. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan. C. 
see how many different languages you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess more. I guess German. I'm guessing German. Yeah, yeah. German yeah. next, then Russian, maybe. I don't know. He, he's just so excited to be here. I, I can do Turkish. Okay. okay. Item 10D. Um, well, rehabilitation of Quail 5A and Olympian 3. Yes, uh, the award of bid, uh, the engineering manager will do the staff report. Thank you, board. Both the Quail Well 5A and the Olympia Well 3 have been in production for nearly 20 years. Over the last few years, the district has registered a steady decline in the production of these wells. Earlier this year, a study was commissioned to investigate the cause of the decline. It was determined that there was buildup in the well screens that was reflected restricting the flow of water into the well casing. Rehabilitation of the wells should restore the water, the well production. Um, we received four bids for rehabilitation of the wells. Staff has reviewed the bids. The vote, bid was, the vote bidder has submitted all the required documents, including a bid bond, and is properly licensed to perform the well rehabilitation work. <coughs> Staff is recommending the Board of Directors adopt the attached resolution awarding the Quail Well 5A and the Olympia Well 3 rehabilitation project to Majora Brothers Drilling Incorporated of Watsonville, California, in the amount of $105,800. Any questions? Was that, was that in the board package, Gary? What? The, what did you just refer to? Yes? No. Yeah, I did. And 10D. should be a memo in there. One, page 162. And a, and a resolution. There's a memo and a resolution. Yes. The other uh, bids and bidders uh, are also listed in the memo. It's interesting, the Delta. <laughs> so, any comments? Um, I recall this was budgeted for this coming year, and out of our capital um, improvement or out of operating. Uh, I have to double check. Um, yeah, just uh, the difference, 105 to 204,000. That's like, whoa. It's location. You know, the doors in Watsonville and all the rest of them come from a lot further. And it's big equipment. Yeah. Your tanks and yeah. a lot of back and forth. Isn't the majority of the people that work on a lot of our, I mean, hasn't yeah. haven't they been doing this for a while? Right. They do most of our emergency, they do all of our emergency yeah. after hours work. Um, and they get most of our bids. They just got the bid on Quail Well uh, or Past Temple Well 8 replacement. They're right in their backyard. Yeah. Past 07 rehab. Yeah, Past 07. So they, ever since I've been here, they've um, was this kind of in line with your expectation of how much it would cost, or is it higher than uh, lower? Yeah, this project was actually, James actually no. put the project okay. out, and uh, I, I didn't, didn't actually know that it was out. So I, I didn't do a very okay. thorough evaluation or anything. It's like about that. what you expected in terms of price? Yeah, it seems I've been through a couple of these, and yeah. it's usually pretty much in the same ballpark for each well. It's right around $15,000 for each well when the door comes in and bids. Okay. Nobody's ever been able to even compete with them, and it's because of where they, where they reside. You know. Okay, great. Next. Do they have t-shirts? Do they have t-shirts from Door Brothers drilling? Extra I'm, sure, I'm sure Rick will pull out all three of them. I think they do. I would love to get some. I think they do. For the fans. Yeah. <laughs> no big here. No big. Everybody gets some. Uh, any board, any other board members have comments other than one who wants t-shirts? <laughs> no? Okay, how about our friendly audience? No comments? Okay. Size preference? <laughs> I want a mug. <laughs> so somebody want to make a motion for this resolution here? I, I move that we approve uh, San Ramos Valley Water District Resolution Number 1, 1920, award of construction contract for Quail Well 5 and Olympia Well 3 rehabilitation project. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I second that. 
wasn't even good here, right? Oops. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Foles? Yes. President Henry? Yes. And Director Swan? Yes. See? Point up? Well, that wasn't sure, right? You haven't used that one. Okay, Mark, you're Doc. Uh, oh. the three. I hope somebody yeah. drives them home. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, issuance of a new debt by the district request to schedule a board meeting. I took some this, plan to get ready to go do something. Right. This is this um, memo and agenda item are a little unusual. We wouldn't typically you know, make it an agenda item just to schedule a meeting like this. Um, I did in this case uh, want to put it on the agenda um, so that the board, so that the meeting at which the debt is approved is uh, technically a regular meeting for all purposes. Also wanted to give the public as much notice that this is being uh, planned and make sure that the board members have as much notice as possible that this is being planned um, so that we can maximize participation because this is an important matter for the district. Um, so the request is to schedule a meeting um, at 6.30 p.m. next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday um, here at the Operations Building to uh, consider and hopefully approve uh, the debt issuance of it's approximately $12 million, I believe, to finance capital projects. Um, I understand that for scheduling reasons, the 23rd is has sort of risen to the surface as a good date. Um, so I'd like to propose um, that if the board is as a recommendation that if the board's comfortable doing this meeting at 6.30 p.m. next Tuesday, that we um, have a motion to schedule the meeting accordingly. We gotta make a motion to approve this meeting. It's a regular meeting if there's a motion to approve it. Yeah, it's a regular meeting. I move that we schedule a regular board meeting for July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Do you need to say where? Here at this facility? Here at this facility. And we should have public comment before the vote. Well, we can do a motion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have, we have a second here? No. I'll second that. Okay. Any, any public comment? Okay, no public comment. Okay. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Fulz? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yeah. Let's go get some money. Just for information too, this loan takes the place of the USDA loan. It's the loan with all the strings. Right. right. So we won't be getting two loans. We'll, uh, this will take the place. We will no longer be pursuing the USDA. And, and it won't be attached to those items. That's correct. We're asking for more, right, so we can fund the t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to new business. Um, item A, surplus trucks. This guy, oh, Rick. Yes, recommending the board adopt the tax resolution uh, declaring two trucks, truck 226 and truck 340 as surplus and authorize the district manager to dispose by uh, either uh, advertised sale or auction. Uh, we have uh, the district's 2018-19 fiscal budget provided for the replacement of vehicles that have reached a life expectancy. The vehicles have been purchased and placed in service. The vehicles replaced have uh, reached their life expectancy and no longer have a value or use to the district. One is a 2003 F-250 pickup truck with 163,000 miles on the odometer um, and came actually with the consolidation of Lompico. And the second is vehicle 340, um, a 2008 Ford Ranger was assigned to the customer service department and had 152,000 miles on it. Those are practically new, how about? <laughs> we're, I'm running at we're driving 300,000 mile vehicles at home, right? 360. Um, <laughs> Language. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Um, and Bob. Uh, 
Um, how do we determine when something has reached the end of the time? What are the criteria that we use to do that? Usually, it's reliability, the amount of funds that we put into it. What usually happens is they wear, frames start cracking, beds start ripping, um, and then the maintenance, the, the finances that go into it. Um, are the beds and frames the most cracked? At this yeah, the, the meter reader are the most cracked in two. As a matter of fact, it's tagged and safe to drive, the meter reading vehicle. The roads that they go on and the weight that they carry, it's just constant, it's stop and go. And the brake, the brake drums are, are, are cracked again, or the, the rotors are cracked again. Uh, when we get going, um, there's pretty much not much to do that. Um, Who was going to buy it? Well, uh, the director of operations is working um, with what Ford Motor, but they have they're uh, having a problem with used vehicles, and they may want them. We've done it with auction before. We put them on Craigslist. Um, we do what we can for them to get rid of them. And what do we get for them typically? The last time we served plus trucks, it was a hundred dollars. <coughs> have them take them to pick, pick and pull to get rid of them. <laughs> Nobody would buy it. You don't get much at all. No, no, but it's, it's a process we have to go through. Can, 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 can you donate them anymore? The like to the schools? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and if they get killed because they're not good. That was a thought, but I mean, we still got money out of them taking it over to pick and pull, so we got sca scrap price for them. So. <coughs> well, good luck in getting them. And, and we rotate them through some of the you know, other vehicles as they start wearing that will move to a lesser uh, duty purpose uh, away from the meter reading and customer service to be used as backup or another vehicle that goes into service and so forth. So we try to get every mile out as we can. We need to do drones for meter reading. Any other, Louie, you got any comments? Uh, I just would like to make a motion that we accept um, I got to ask the public. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anybody in the public have anything to say about these vehicles? Want to place a bid? We'll give you two shucks. You know, we used to repo a car once in a while at the credit union, and they'd be in pretty good shape. And they go to auction, you get nothing. So these are not in really good shape, and you aren't going to get much. So now, Lou. And now I'd like to make a motion that we accept resolution number 3, 19-20, with the wording of the resolution declaring surplus vehicles for private points disposal. I second. Do we skip two? Sorry. Yeah, that's just that same question. Yeah, I was wondering about that. To be too. used later. Like, let's let's use only odd numbers this year. Because we had one and three. Okay. Okay. So Director Ferris? Aye. Director Foles? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan. C. And I'm repeating myself. Do Doc. You know, I'm worried about you. Okay. Oh, I see you some Canadian. Yes, A? Um, <laughs> yes, A. He's just so happy to be here. That's right. Um, okay, yeah. item B. Rick? Yes, so uh, you have in front of you the right <coughs> board review the memo and the attached documentation, and by motion of the board, authorize the president to execute a ballot on behalf of the district for one of the three candidates for the LAFCO alternative member representative. We have three members of uh, candidates, uh, Edward Banks from Pajaro Valley Public Cemetery District, you have uh, Carla Christensen from Soquel Creek Water, and you have uh, Edward Harmon from Scotts Valley Fire Protection District. That'll turn it back over to the board. You know, we um, yes, we, we actually I think wound up voting for uh, Mr. Banks. <laughs> the, the, I think we did last night. Yes, yeah. but um, I forget the lady that was on it. There was only two. It was him and the, the so she won. And she's from SoCal Creek uh, Water District. So um, my recommendation is that we not vote for another SoCal Creek Water District. We also have a fire. There's already a fire district for right. a person on there from our area and. Um, 
so I still go with uh, Mr. Banks' recommendation. Uh, I think the cemetery districts uh, around the state need representation too. And uh, I, I, he seems to have a really good background, and I don't think there's any would be any issue with that firm again. He's yeah. not an occupant, right? He's not an occupant. <laughs> not. Well. And uh, I lean that way also. Yeah. We do, all through the cemetery. Okay. <laughs> uh, who? I recommend Edward Harmon. Okay. Uh, would why? you like to know why? Yeah, that's okay. That I believe he is the best qualified person in terms of education and experience. And I think that his uh, tenure with NASA kind of speaks to his ability to uh, handle complex issues. Last off. Sorry? No. Fire. Scotts Valley Fire? Yeah, currently in the Scotts Valley Fire Protection District. He's also uh, Perot's husband for, for the Scotts Valley Water. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Yes. Uh, oh negative. Negative. Uh, negative. Yeah. 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 It changes it. Yeah. Take the cemetery I didn't mean that. <laughs> it was a thousand of fire, but I think that's easy. Thank you, sir. I, I just I just I knew that. that. Did you? Yeah. So do we well, thanks for sharing. I can make a motion. He's a very good guy. Make a motion. He is a very nice guy. I get that. I get that. Okay. So any comments from the public here? Did you shake your head yes, Debbie? No. Okay. Virgil, it was bobbing Virgil, up and down. Virgil wants to see Oh, Virgil. I actually, I did, I'm not being facetious. I have eight of my so we can do that. Um, but I believe Director Foltz's reasoning was pretty good. Um, I also disagree um, with Director Ferris's assumption that because he worked for NASA, He's able to deal with complex issues properly, and I have experience there. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any other comment? I make a motion that we um, authorize President Henry to execute a ballot on behalf of the district for Mr. Edward Banks of the Pajaro Valley Public Cemetery District to be the LAFCO alternative member representative. I'll second that. Okay. Director Ferris? No. Director Falls? Yes. Director H President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. All righty, moving ahead here. James, I'm the lights. I I am seeing that. I know. Yes, you have it in front of you uh, the California Special District 2019 Board of Directors election. Uh, you have in front of you uh, consider the nominees for the CSBA uh, Board of Directors seat B and the Coastal uh, Network uh, for term 2020 to 2022. Um, and you have it all back up in your packet. Do we know any of these people? No. We do? You need to vote for one candidate. I know where Sandy Nez is, and I know where Ohio, Ohio is, but beyond that. Well, I know where Ohio is. Anybody owe us money? No. Did no. somebody go I, I don't have a or in the water here, because... I, I do have a question, though. Do, do we get... We, I mean, that's really far south of here. So, I mean, we're lumped in with... Is this like a coastal thing? That's all, almost all... I mean, Ohio is all the way down to Ventura. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, um, Ohio. Santa, yeah. Santa Inez is just north of Santa Barbara. I mean, this yeah. is like a long mm -hmm. way away. Hollywood's a... Uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not area. It's, it's not right. No, it's CSDA. the whole CSDA. She's, uh, or this person is Jeff, sorry. And, well, 
is currently CSDA vice president and vice chair. I, I don't know. I have. I mean, I looked at it, and my, my only criteria was, hey, let's get somebody new. Oh, well, you want to get somebody new? Yeah, so let's, you know, we're, we're new. Let's support somebody that's new. Well, that would be Mr. Curtis. Yeah. It says CSDA Lions Club. Uh, Luke. Can we Alexander Acacia Cortez as a write in? I called on Luke, please. I would like to nominate Jeff Hodge because of experience with water districts in three different states, Colorado, Arizona, and California. Three big droughts. Sound, sounds good to me. A lot of problems to some of the treatment operators. What do you think? I, I have no dog in this time. Yeah, I don't have any ore in the water. So. Okay. I'd like to second Mr. Ferris' uh, nomination. Then. Okay. So, any comment from the audience here? This has been uh, such a nice meeting. <laughs> Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. President Henry? Yes. And Director Swan? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> President Henry, before moving on uh, to uh, close out the meeting, I'd like to request uh, that the board consider making a motion to reconsider item uh, 10D solely for the purpose of making an administrative correction. I'm sorry, it's not 10D. It's 10B? It's 11A. Oh, no. oh, 11A surplus, surplus trucks? To reconsider it solely for the purpose of making an administrative change to uh, the resolution number from 3 to 2. Okay. And uh, I would recommend that because the financing motion is going to be the next motion and it would be good to have a clean record. Yes. Okay. So okay. somebody, if one of the board members um, could humor my request and make a motion to reconsider, then the board would need to vote on whether to Entertain the motion. Okay. Oh, so I'll, make a motion. Oh, oh. I'll make a motion to reconsider um, the previous resolution number three, 1920. So we have to basically reconsider it, vote on that, and we have to do the um, real time again. But there has to be a vote on whether to reconsider it, yeah. and then a vote to change so the motion. I made the motion to reconsider it. I guess I'll second that. Okay. I gotta go up with another language here. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Foles? Yes. President Henry? Aye. Director Swan? We. A repeat. We. Consider. Now, if a board member would make a motion to, to uh, change the number of the resolution from two to three. Three to two. I'm sorry. Three to two. Three to two. <laughs> that was a test. We did good pass. Do we just redo the motion all over again? Is that what you're saying? Or do I have to? I mean, I can say. You could do it either way. You could sort of. I lost my place. Let's take a test. I move that we approve San Lorenzo Valley Water District Resolution Number Two, replacing the three as written in the agenda. 19-20 resolution declaring surplus vehicles and providing for its for their disposal for its disposal. Okay. I'll second that motion. Thank you. So I apologize for that. It was oh first Ferris Director Hi. Ferris. Hi. Director Falls. Yes. President Henry. Yes. And Director Swan. Bueno. So I. I had assigned two to the um, 10E, the issuance of new debt. I had assigned a resolution to it when it should have been the next one in line instead of that one. Okay. So, all right. Are you done?
No, we're not. Oh, good. I want to get done. So, okay, um, we have district reports. Do you have to set the agenda first? Minutes huh? first. Minutes. You have minutes first, I believe. Oh, consent agenda. Is, did anyone, anybody want to pull it out, a minutes out? Okay, so... Uh, Virgil, you have something you wanted to say about the minutes? Well, it's not. You want to pull one something out? No, never mind. Thank you. Well, you I can. Just read something. I just read something. Okay, you misread. Okay. Um, Sorry. So there's no nobody's pulling any minutes out. They're just approved, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I recommend we update the, and we can just do this administratively, but update the general language so yes. that it doesn't say that a motion is required. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so the minutes are approved. So now we're going to go to 13. District reports, right? right? You have the, uh, in front of you the department staff reports engineering, environmental, finance, and business, legal, and operations. Uh, some of the department heads are here tonight. They can answer questions. If, not, so if you have questions and we don't have any answers, we will bring them back to you. But um, you have the reports in front of you. So engineering is going first, is that it, or? No. Uh, I was just going to, uh, however you want to do it. No, I was just going to make a couple of comments. Of, uh, so, okay. Well, okay. So an engineering report, clean, clear, right. succinct. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 three different categories. I assume there'll be a, another category done <laughs> when, we, when we have one done. Um, that, that, that's very good, I, and it's it's at a level that it's easy to grasp what you're what you're working on, what you're focused on. So I, I, I appreciate that, um, and uh, um, you know as we get additional uh, projects underway in the next year, it might expand out. But, and I think it's good. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, actually, that could probably be three pages, four pages. If I just you know, there's there's a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. New things constantly being added. I'm sure, it's, I think it's sort of a work in progress right now. Yeah. Trying to figure out. The, I think the only other thing is that I heard from Rick that there's things that come in, requests that come in that for evaluation or something like that. Um, is that is yeah, there a case? Yeah. Any kind of engineering reviews or something like that. These are things that we aren't currently charging for. Oh, the mirror view. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, and we'll be looking at coming to the uh, committee to talk about that um, as, as Darren gets up to speed on uh, how much time that he is spending on these individual meter reviews that we are, we believe we should be charging sometimes. Any, any idea of how many of them? I've, well, I've probably got 25 open meter reviews right now that are being considered. Are you kidding? No, no. there's a ton of them. But yeah. they come in, they're insane. They just roll in throughout the week, boom, boom, but boom, and they, they're, they well, take a lot of time. And keep, to keep in mind, these are very difficult. Most of these are either existing homes or an upgrade with uh, accessory dwelling units. A lot of them, uh, maybe 10% well, will turn into an actual meter set. Um, a lot of it's his time and a lot of labor to see if we can serve these these parcels. It's not an automatic 25 new connections. No, no, I, I, not, and I wasn't looking at it from that point of view. I was looking from the point of view of, oh my God, that's a lot of meters. Yeah, yeah none, meters. None, of that, none of that shows up on the engineering report just because right. there's so many of them in so many different phases of review. Yeah, uh, that, but it that's, takes that's, his time, it's a lot of director of operations time. There's put, we should be charging. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we should be charging for this. Yeah. Especially if the conversion is only about 10%. Yeah. Right? If it was one thing, if it was converting at 90%, but at 10%, that's, that's really right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question for, for Darren. 
on the uh, San Lorenzo Way Bridge project that's in design. You talk about working with Santa Cruz DWP staff on, on the details, but then you go on to say that uh, the construction will be built to district standards. Do I assume Waterline that, construction. Right. Do, do I assume from that that there was a disagreement with DWP on no just no no I was just trying just pointing out that you that know, standard well yeah what we're trying to do is incorporate into their specifications the proper wording so the contractor's not confused when he goes to construction as to who is the lead agency that that he's trying to the standards that he's trying to make. So this is normal. Yeah, that's straightforward. And, and this of course is for existing lines plus the line that might potentially connect into raw water. From that's that. correct. Okay. Okay. Um, any other board questions on any of the other staff reports? Any, any questions? Here. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, committee reports? Minutes are here. Well, the minutes are here. So nobody had any questions about finance, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. no committee reports. I I would guess this meeting is over. That we can. Well, except for the fact that we do need to talk at, at length and extensively about the San Francisco Chronicle. <laughs> 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 it's already been said up there. No, but that, I mean, we need to really drive it home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are work, we are working on outreach, though. So. They're both on that geo, too. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he was on National Geographic, too. So, were you? I'll pile on here. so was I. Her firm emailed me and told me that you had. Big yeah. world famous. <laughs> so, you know, that's San Francisco famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kudos. We can uh, we can bring the uh, Bay Area here to our little neck of the woods. I almost thought it was a crank call. He was trying to sell me something. I was going to hang up on him. That's funny. So, I'm adjourning the meeting at what time? 7.35? Thirty-five, nice. and we will have another meeting Tuesday evening at 6.30. At 6.30. Same. Wow.